Welcome back to the Wild Island Farm and the renovation chaos. <laughs> After the devastating start of August that I showed you last week, it was time that things got better and that we had some success moments and some happy moments in between. And I'm happy to report <laughs> that the rest of the month was very nice, filled with many amazing moments filled with gratitude and also filled with progress on the house, starting out with um, a project that I don't really know how to describe, but when we removed the fake ceiling, we had discovered that between the actual house wall and the top of the roof, there was like a distance that was filled with rubble that, of course, immediately became loose as soon as you touched them and we had to of course fill that up again to stabilize the roof. I mean the roof stayed like this for a while and it was fine but long term of course it needs more stabilization and that's what we did. That took quite a while. Actually while I'm recording this there is still one room <laughs> that needs this work. But uh, yeah, it was fascinating to see and at the end it looked so much better than before. Why? I captured, captured this. Huh? Captured this. And our penalty, like every vlog. Something to the camera, Tasmin. Hello. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Besides fixing the upper part of the walls, we also finally fixed the area on top of the stone oven. I will actually make a separate video about the stone oven once we're finished with it because it happened in so many tiny steps on the side that it made no sense to put it in a chronological video. But anyway, we finally worked on that area and it is so, so, so nice now.
And of course, we also worked on the walls. That was a constant thing over so, so, so many weeks because, again, our constructor only has time like one or two days per week, so everything is moving very slowly. And especially a huge wall project like this that, yeah, needs a lot of cement blocks. Um, that takes a while. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can see here we also had to cut some of the cement blocks into place for both of the projects. And, yeah, it was, it was a work full time. Uh, we were still far from where we wanted to be. But still, every day that we were working, we were seeing progress and... That was very, very good. And actually, during that time, I also got the opportunity to take a few days off and just enjoy island life, which was so good because when you're caught up in renovations and the frustrations of it, you sometimes forget why you're doing this. And yeah, I got to spend some time with a friend on a hike and in my favorite cave, Gruta Restorisch, and I will never get tired of that cave. <laughs> I want to move in. <laughs> but yeah, I got to spend some wonderful days and I'm so grateful for them. Hello, cows. We're not going to do all five kilometers today. No, that would take us all day. We're just going to do around 500 meters, something like that, inside of the cave, okay? So any questions before we go down? Okay, let's imagine. The explosion happens, the lava starts going inside of the hole, it starts melting the rock, and eventually creates a new secondary tunnel, once the lava drains. Um, in this case, we can see that didn't happen, right? You can actually compare the rock on the inside of the hole to this one. Right? These are concentrations of calcium carbonate on the rock. Yeah, it's a mineral that lava has. And this gallery, for whatever reason, we don't really know either, has a very big concentration of this mineral in. If you've paid some attention, you've seen a little bit of, of, this, uh, of this mineral as we were going down the tunnel. But this gallery has a very big concentration of it. Hello, I just wanted to come on here. I chose a very bad spot to film this. One second, I'm standing above a hole. I don't know why I thought this was a good idea while we still have holes in the floor, but okay, give me a second. So I basically just wanted to chat a little bit about gratitude because 
I know that I'm not doing the most perfect job at documenting this renovation because I'm just so busy actually renovating, but I feel like oftentimes it can come across as a more negative thing. And of course, there were so many moments throughout the last couple of months that were just so frustrating. Um, because things went wrong, because things took way longer than we anticipated, because every time we made a step forward, like something came up that like would take us another few weeks to fix. It's an old house. And also renovations are, of course, hard work and they eat up your finances very, very fast and all this kind of stuff. So it kind of come across as very negative. But I really have to say I feel happier than I've ever felt before. Not only do I actually find a lot of joy in many of the things that we do, as hard as they may be and as bruised and cut open as I am at the end of each renovation day, I still find a lot of joy in these things. I discovered that I really enjoy working with my hands and my body, which I never anticipated because I'm an artist, I'm a writer. So a lot of what I do is this <laughs> and not like... <laughs> That was a great explanation. <laughs> so basically what I'm saying is that I actually find a lot of joys in the in-between. Again, of course, there are so many frustrations and stuff, but there's just so much happiness because I, I never expected myself to be in this position. I, when I was still in Germany and when I was still finding myself in my 20s, I was convinced I was going to be a nomad in one way or the other, probably some traveling digital nomad somewhere. Um, traveling from here to there to there, never having a home, never settling down. That was my idea of a perfect life. And now I'm here renovating a 200 year old house in the middle of nowhere. And it's so great. <laughs> it truly shows that you can never predict where life leads you and that we can be so grateful for it, that we can be so grateful for the great unknown and the uncertainties and the unexpected twists in our own lives. And there are so many reasons to be grateful at this time, as hard as it can be. But I'm so grateful for our constructor who has been so amazing. He's so, such an incredible kind spirit and he's such a hard worker. And I just, I just love working with him and having him around. And again, the Azorian community, guys, I don't, there's a plastic bottle up there. <laughs> welcome, to, <laughs> welcome to Renovation Chaos. <laughs> One of the beams that hold up the roof is balancing an empty plastic bottle. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna get that down there. <laughs> anyway, what I was saying is the Azorian community once again really proves to me that I'm in the right place. Like. I, I come from Germany and our culture is very cold and distanced in comparison to the Azorian culture. Here everything is about coming together, sharing, being generous, being kind, being friendly. Again, not everybody is like this. It is always very dangerous to describe a place or its people with like just a few adjectives and like put them in a box. Not every Azorian is generous, not every Azorian is kind. There are also bad people living here. But uh, same, same goes for immigrants, of course. Duh. But <laughs> just in general, the culture here is just so different from where I am from. And we were so lucky with the neighborhood that we are in. We had no idea about that. It was just like a lucky shot when we when we bought the house. Um, but the people in our neighborhood are just so kind. I had a day the other week where I just cried with joy because I could tell that the people here really want us to be there and that they cannot wait for us to move in. Like, how crazy is that? When your neighbors come up to you and are just like, we are so excited for you to move in. When are you moving in? Like, we want you to move in like today, you know? And so helpful and kind and they lend us things. And and it's, it's, it's something that I'm already tearing up again. No, no, we're not doing that on camera. It is something that I'm just not familiar with and something that just touches me so deeply because 
I don't know these people or not not deeply at least like I know their names and I know who is related to who at this point and I can't even properly communicate with them because my Portuguese is still not good enough which I will tackle whenever I have a bit more headspace <laughs> and like for me that's like even more mind-boggling to be like I, I'm, I'm a stranger I'm a foreigner I'm from a, from a different country from a different culture and I can barely speak with them except for like very shallow conversation and still they're so incredibly kind and smile every time they see me and it's just so genuine also and it, it just I can never express how grateful I am to have stumbled into this life I know not every immigrant has the same experience as I do I know not every Azorian has the same view of these islands as I do. I know every island is different. I know every town is different. But my experience, I'm just so lucky and I'm just so grateful every single day for this journey that I'm on and the people that are in it. And I just wanted to express that on video because I feel like it is so hard to show that with like pretty pictures. It's just, it's indescribable. And I'm at a loss for words, which is why I'm gonna shut up now because I've talked long enough. Thank you so much for listening.